Hey guys, welcome back to the backlog. Last time on Metal Gear Marathon or Metal Gear Fuckthon, I don't know what the hell I'm calling this, uh, we played Metal Gear 1 for the MSX, but we played it on the PS3. So, as you know, if you're a Metal Gear fan, once you start Metal Gear 1, you gotta play Metal Gear 2, which is like 100% better. Now, it's pretty much just as cryptic in a way, but I'm gonna try... I'm going to try and hold off on using guides at least until the second episode. I know how to get through, like, the first part of the game. Don't underestimate me, but underestimate me, okay? So let's get in there. Also, I'm going to try and be more quiet during, uh, like, this opening, because this opening is amazing. The music in it is fucking amazing. So let's get into it. Let's go, motherfucker. Let's go. This is so fucking cool. <laughs> I wonder when this game was made. I gotta check the date. Let me check the date. But this must have been pretty impressive, because it's running on the same exact console that the original did. Oh, 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 oh. Something weird shit on my phone. There's always weird shit on my phone, my man. There always is. It was released in 1990, so three years after the original, and it's running on the same exact console, so it's amazing to see the evolution. Dun, 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 dun. Ooh. Yeah, zoom in on that dick cannon. <laughs> Mr. Kojima. Metal Gear. Metal Gear 2, Solid Snake. And that music is probably one of the best pieces of music ever. In the late 1990s, the world is embarking on an age of peace and stability. Okay. Relations between the Cold War superpowers have thawed. Regional conflicts are being resolved. The threat of nuclear war is now a thing of the past. But there are some who do not desire peace. An atmosphere of tension begins to build in the Middle East. I'm not going to talk about modern day politics about that. 
A military Junat comes from the power in, Zan in Zanzibar land, a small nation bordering the USSR, China, and the Middle East. Zanzibar land attacks nuclear weapon disposal sites around the world, seizing those weapons that are still intact and becomes the world's only nuclear power. It be then begins to invade its neighbors at will. Because nukes. You'll learn in the Metal Gear series that nukes are everything. There's a nuke in every single game, I think. After renouncing nukes forever, the world is once again threatened by the specter, by the specter of nuclear war. By the spectacle of nuclear war. Eh, that works too. <laughs> Meanwhile, the world's oil supply, which was to last another 30 years, suddenly and unexpectedly dries up. Without a safe alternative source of energy, the world faces a severe energy crisis. That's not good. <laughs> good thing that didn't happen in our world in the 1990s. Maybe we might have found a way around it, but it would be probably pretty hard. <laughs> in these dire circumstances, that Dr. Kyo Marv, a, chess, a Czech biologist, develops Oilix, a microbe that can synthesize high-grade petroleum. Otherwise known as just something that creates fucking oil. With this discovery, global tensions are once again on the rise. On his way to attend an American scientific conference, Dr. Marv is kidnapped by the ancients of Zanzibar land. Not Zanzibar land. We're not talking about Zanzibar Island from the Big Shell Inst from the Blue Shell Incident, not Big Shell. <laughs> that is that is later in the series, much, much, much later in the series. With its nuclear weapons and the secret of Oilix, Zanzibar Land plans to achieve global military domination. <laughs> and I I plan to achieve global pain. <laughs> A tiny microbe, only a few microns wide, is about to change the world forever. I don't know what a micron is. Or what a microbe is. Is it like where you're wearing a robe and it's really tight? Anyway, Metal Gear 2, Solid Snake. As you can see, the sequel to Metal Gear is a lot more story driven, and games are going to get a lot more story driven. Anyway, we're playing it on the PS3 version. And, uh, as I did with the, for, for the first game, I am planning on doing it on the original mode. And there's gonna be a lot, well, they're not really cutscenes, but there's gonna be a lot more story sections. Like, in the first game, we barely had any story. But now, there's going to be a lot, lot, lot more story. So, it's a lot more voice acting for me. This is Snake. I've reached the infiltration point. Snake! <laughs> what does Campbell sound like? This is the first time Campbell shows up. He just sounds like a, a random dude. Snake, right on time, as always. Let's get started. Commencing Operation Intrude F F-014. It's my favorite F-Zero game. Don't worry about it. It's never coming out. Let's go over this one more time. Your mission is to infiltrate Zanzibar land and rescue the kidnapped Czech biologist, Dr. Keo Marv. Snake, we provide you with a new anti-personnel sensor. Try switching it on. Roger. Okay, it's on. The white dots on your radar are enemy soldiers, and the red dot is your current position. The radar is equipped with several other types of sensors as well. They should warn you of any unseen danger. What's the radar's effective range? Take a look at your radar display. It shows a nine-screen area centered on your position. However, it may not work in small, enclosed spaces. Also, if the enemy spawns you, Spawn, if he spawns on top of you, which probably could happen, you won't be able to use the radar. The enemy will use a jammer to scramble it. Apparently they know that you have it. Got it. Where can I find Dr. Marv? Well, Dr. Marv has a transmitter implanted in one of his molar teeth. When you get close to him, he'll show up as a red dot on your radar. So, I just have to keep an eye out for the red dot, which is also me. Colonel, this was a bad idea. Snake, use frequency 140.85 for all future communications with me. Good luck. Over and out. Yep, this is the first time we get the Soliton radar, allowing us to actually see where other enemies are. Also, I guess I should update you on controls, since we really didn't talk about it last time. You can now use X to go into a crouching position, which lets you go into a crawling position. Circle punches instead of square now. 
And Square will let you do, uh, well, your gun shit. But anyway, the enemies now are not dumb as a brick. You can't just walk right next to them. They are actually s smart this time. So, it's the first time I actually have to sneak. I'm going to sneak like a sneaky boy and fail many, many a time. But then again, at least I'm not as bad as DSP. Fucking, I'm never going to lose that joke. Like, Metal Gear is such a prolific series, but the one person that everybody knows about playing it is Darkseid Phil. And he was horrible at all of them. Which is, like, amazingly funny, because he had no clue how to play those games. Which I probably don't know either, but at least I know how to sneak around and listen to tutorials. I don't really know anything about Darkseid Phil, I just know he's kind of a prick. Also, he spends a lot of money on, like, this WWE game. I, I'm a Chris Chan guy. I know more about Chris Chan. I don't know a lot about DSP. Anyway, use crawling to sneak over the gaps in the fence, over and out. Yeah, and the Kodok... Kodok. The Kodak this time, I don't think it's actually called the Kodak in this game, is actually useful. Unlike last time, where Big Boss would just call you and give you really bad advice. Alright, we need to get back under here. With the Solitone Radar, which is not what it's called in this game, I'm actually able to see where enemies are. Ooh, that was some close shit, brother. I don't... There's supposed to be an enemy over this way, but we're just gonna fucking avoid it then. But yeah, we need to be a lot more careful. Things are going to get a lot more fucking vicious this time. Yep. I'm... I don't plan on, like... You know how last time we got the... I think we got the... Dough... Or maybe the deer ranking or whatever. Yeah, I'm not going for really high rankings. <laughs> if you ever expect me to get Big Boss, which Big Boss is like the highest rating you can get normally. Which is by like killing nobody, only getting seen a couple of times. And like beating the game within like an hour or two or maybe four. Uh, that's how you get Big Boss rank. Which pretty much seems like an impossibility for me. Since I'm going to be killing a lot of people. I don't know if that counts as killing them or knocking them out. I think it just counts as killing them. Anyway. Yeah, and the music. I loved the music from the first game, but the music has just gotten like 15 million times better. Also, it's... We still have that cigarette, and we got one of the rations. The rations are different this time. They're not all the same ration. Some contain different stuff, and some contain other stuff. Which means that they're used for certain parts. Now watch out up here, because there's... Oh, nobody's calling me, which is the same guy, Campbell. You can't sneak through the front door. Use the vents, over and out. You see how I like... Oh, shit. Yeah, you can actually knock on walls now. Oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. I already got caught, so, uh... Good job, me. Anyway. Uh, the rations work the same way as in the last game. But they don't work in the way that you can just immediately keep on picking them up. That's not possible. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. I also... I've played a little bit into the beginning parts of the game. So I kind of know how it works and stuff. So I know where to go for the beginning. So I'm not going to be completely lost. But, yeah. We're still probably going to have problems like me being bad at avoiding enemies. There is no, like, countdown... In this game, like there is in later games, to when an alert phase is gone or not. So we have to just be aware of that. Oh, call. Always make sure to call them. I'm Holly. Holly White. I infiltrated Zanzibar Land a month ago, posing as a journalist. So I know pretty much how things work around here. I'll help you any way I can. My frequency is 140.15. Call me later. Yeah, and you can still do the whole, like... Calling them with, like, moving down and stuff. Anyway, yeah, this, uh, I learned recently that the reason that Metal Gear 2 was created is to kind of, like, spit in the face of the people that created the, uh, uh, Metal Gear 2 for the, for the Nintendo. Because originally, uh, Kojima wasn't planning on making another Metal Gear game. He just wanted it to be the first Metal Gear game, and that be it. But because they made a sequel and they made it so bad, Kojima kind of thought like, well, I'm going to show them up. I'm going to show them how powerful I am at creating video games. And it kind of worked out in the end. Because, well, now we have such an amazing games like Metal Gear Solid and 
well, Metal Gear Solid, and this game, and other games. Also, the elevators are a bit different this time. They're not as dumb as last time, but you have to hit for them to go places. Anyway, I know where to go right now. We're gonna go up to floor two. But yeah, just like the first Metal Gear, I haven't beaten Metal Gear 2 before. I know it's a lot better of a game, I just haven't brought myself to beat it quite yet. Anyway. There's the first card. Oh shit, he hears me. So, at this point, there's no reason on in being on this floor anymore, so we got the first key card, so we're gonna fucking dip out. So, at this point, we need to go... Hmm. Let's go up to floor three. We can go down to the basement later. Let's see, so in here... Now that we have the key card, we can actually get around to areas. And look, there's the red dot on the Soliton radar, so we already found Dr. Mav. Dr. Marv. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he's kind of a weird dude. He doesn't have any personality outside of just that he was the scientist that got kidnapped this time instead of Dr. Modnar. Also, uh... There's a reason why we wanted to go to the basement, is because this area is all full of tripwires. There we go. Yeah, it's full of tripwires, but you can also use cigarettes. And that's a tactic you learn. F they're about to run out. Alright, let's switch over before we lose them. Anyway. Shit. Well, we got our gas. I don't... Oh, there's more things in there. I'm an idiot. Anyway. Let's see. I mean, Snake's all good with cigarettes, so... If he's the one who's fine with it, I will let him do it. I think it's actually killing him the more I use them. Anyway. We've got the gas mask, and as you know, the gas is back. It's kind of just as painful as the other game, but, like, instead of it zapping your health, it instead just zaps an oxygen meter. Which is dumb, but, like, that's kind of fine. Anyway, I'm gonna head back down to floor two, because I need another ration. Because we're actually uh, coming up to the first boss soon. Yeah, that's a lot quicker than the original Metal Gear, whose first boss took you a while to get to. I also enjoy how this game actually looks like it's got places, because in the original Metal Gear, it really didn't look like you were anywhere. Everywhere looked like the same exact place. Let's look at our rations. <laughs> this one's got... Whew, this one's got beef, pork, ham, eggs, tuna, chocolate, and crackers. This one's got beans, meatball, bean... <laughs> beans, meatball, bean, and franks, beef, and... Potatoes. I don't know if this one does anything, but this one will do something for us in the future. They're all used for certain things. Let's see. There's the binoculars, an item that I just didn't use in the original run-through. Uh, I need you out. Anyway. Shit, they're coming this way. Oh shit, I knew this was gonna happen. Ugh, fuck. We gotta get the hell out of here. We still don't have the suppressor quite yet, so... We're dealing with a gun that's still loud. We get the suppressor much quicker than we did in the original Metal Gear. Uh, they're gonna run in here. Yep, I knew it. Come on, die! There we go. Apparently, that guy was unaware that I got in there. Also, just like in the first game, every time you use an elevator, it kinda acts as a save point. It's like the point you can return back to every time you need it. You can also knock on walls, like I said, and you can distract guards like that. A lot of the things that you would see later on in the Solid series come from Metal Gear Solid 2. No, not Metal Gear Solid 2. Metal Gear 2. Anyway. I got the rations I wanted, and we also got the infrared goggles, which will be more useful later. So let's go in there, and we need to head back up to floor two, because for some reason the other uh, elevator just doesn't work on any of the other floors. Weird way. Also, the Foxhound logo is, like, really cartoony in this game. That's meant to be the Foxhound logo. It's, <laughs> it's not as cool as the one you would see in later games. Very cartoony. Anyway. 
And the alert phase is... It's a little bit easier to get away with. Just because, like... Uh, it's easier to get away with. That's all I can really say. Like, you can just get away with more things with it. Anyway. You can also crawl under things now. Which is a pretty useful skill. Anyway, open this. And you're gonna need the gas. The gas doesn't... Uh, what the gas mask does is it expands your ability to have more oxygen. So... Anyway, don't walk in there quite yet. It would be best to put on some rations. Alright, hey, Dr. Marv. He he he. Foolish, Foxhound. Dr. Marv isn't here. Figures that Foxhound would use such a cheap transmitter. You guys are really behind the times. I am Black Ninja, a former member of NASA's Extraterrestrial Environment Special Forces Unit. Now, let's just see how strong the world's most advanced Black Ops unit really is. Show me what you've got, Foxhound! Yeah, this is the first boss, and he's kind of a bitch. I have beaten him. He's just really shitty. You're gonna need a lot of rations if you're gonna try and get through to him. That's why That's why I wanted to get the extra ration. There is a way- I've beaten him without- with only needing, like, one ration. Now, watch him. Yeah, he really likes to run to that side of the room, so I like to pick on him when he's there. Like, he likes to run there and then just sit there for a bit, so I like to pick on him while he's there. Oh, he actually ran into the bullet. He'll like jumping back to the same area, so I like to just kind of bully him in there. It's gonna be hard, because it, it's... I'm sorry to say, but the bosses are a lot harder than they were in the first Metal Gear. He is really not liking me running over to his little position, does he? Yeah, he takes about, like, eight hits or something. He's a hard boss, I tell you what. The Black Ninja. I'm probably gonna fail this the first time. I do have, like, well, my rations, but they're not gonna be lasting me out much longer. You see, I'm out of bullets now, so... Uh, the only way to beat him is to punch him, which is not very possible when he is teleporty. So that's the first loss of the fucking challenge already. See, I just need him to kill me now. Also, Snake fell on top of boxes. <laughs> Weird graphic, but yeah. Anyway, yeah, the Black Ninja is... Well, I guess... For me, it was the first roadblock in figuring out how to beat the game, but... It's, it's not horrible, but yeah, they already took away the transmitter that Dr. Marv had on him. So... Now we're gonna have to search for him without it. Which is kind of what we did in Metal Gear 1 with Dr. Modnar, but, you know, it would have been nice to be able to track him. Alright, let's pull out our rations again, because we're pussies. He also has iframes, like you saw, so you can't spam bullets against him. The strategy really is just to sit at the bottom, and just wait for him after he shoots all of his ninja stars. Do... And if you remember from Metal Gear Solid 1, you'll remember that there was also a ninja in that game, and this is where that came from. <laughs> yeah, Metal Gear 2, a lot of the ideas from it just came it came and went into Metal Gear Solid. Anyway, I'm getting a much better fucking run this time, ain't I? Just jump over there again. You see, he likes to run into the bullet. Sometimes you can get him on the turn, but it's not always possible. You see, he likes to dodge like a motherfucker. And sometimes your shots just don't connect. Come on, turn up! You see, I don't have many shots left. There is ammo to get and stuff, but like, I guess I was just dumb and didn't grab any. Alright, yeah, he's pretty close to death. At this point, I could probably just spam him out and I could probably kill him, but... I'd rather try and face him on his own fucking terms. Let's see. He's just, like, spam teleporting now. <laughs> oh, I got him. Okay, good. Snake. Who are you? How do you know my name? I'm guessing that's what he's saying, because it's taking a long time. I it's me, Schneider. Kyle Schneider. Remember me? Well, we don't, because we never really called you, but he's from the first game. If you remember. 
Schneider, you were the one in the resistance at Outer Heaven. Outer Heaven. But I thought they killed you. You still got a lot to learn, Snake. I was almost killed, but not by them, by you and your country. What are you saying, Schneider? What are you saying, Schneider? Metal Gear. Snake, after you destroyed Metal Gear. NATO launched a massive bombing campaign against Outer Heaven. All of us resistance fighters and the children of Outer Heaven, they didn't care about any of us. There was no escape from the flames. They died like animals in a cage. I can't believe this. Think about it. The children of Outer Heaven were originally war orphans and refugees from all over the world. They were a liability, and NATO didn't want to deal with them. No. You're no different. They'll forget about you, too. But he wasn't like them. Who? He came and saved us from annihilation. He forgave us for what we'd done. He gave us a new land to call a home, a new family. He did? You mean... Snake, you'll understand soon what a wonderful man he is. Snake, I owe you a debt. There's no hate between us. I'll tell you where Dr. Marv is. It's what he would want me to do. Find the man who's guarding the cell where Dr. Marv is being held. Follow that man. He should lead you straight to the cell. You can tell him by his you can tell him by his green beret. He should be on the first floor. Got that? A green beret. Follow the man in the green beret. I'm gonna explode now! <laughs> yeah, everybody dies in explosions. Oh, there's the music. It just made a weird noise. But yeah, this is really when the series started to get a lot more political in a way. And I actually really like that. I like that it brought more realistic ideas into the game. Like, thinking about, like, how most of them, like, most of those big military people probably don't care about these people, which is really sad. Can I get out of here? Looks like these don't change. Well, it's a good thing you also get all your health back. This is when the game started doing... Instead of getting your health back or getting new health after, like, getting your rank up, you just need to beat more of the game, which I think is a much better way of doing that. Also, we need to get away from this area. Now that we have Keycard 2, we can do a lot more in the building, and I do not want to get out of the building quite yet. There's things we can do with this inside the building. We can't do a lot, but we can do some. So I think there is an area over here that we can fuck with. I don't, I don't know if it's just got ammo or if it's got something nice inside of it, but I'd rather grab it before I went off and did something else. But yeah, these guys... You can grab them right, you can like go through them right as they're going off, but anything other than that, and you're gonna get fucked. Also, I really do not like this puzzle. It's kind of bullshit with this goddamn thing in the middle. Or with the... The video camera going back and forth, and how it never times correctly to let you into the room. You see how it's just like, oh... There was your shot, and now you missed it. It's probably best to go through, like, the upper echelon of that, and then go down. Right as the camera bounces, we're gonna go. And now. Let's see. Yeah, I was guessing that was gonna happen. Anyway, there's the mine detector from the last game. Anyway, we need to try and sneak away from everything. We're doing pretty good. And no enemies decided that they wanted to ruin my fucking parade. Alright, let me out. There we go. Anyway, we got the mine detector now. <laughs> Which is kind of useful. I don't know where it's going to be used at, but... I'm betting it'll be useful. Don't worry about it. But yeah, I really like that the game actually tells you where to go, because the bosses of the last game just didn't tell you anything. That actually helps me out a lot more than anything in the last game. <laughs> that fucking, that fucking thing. <laughs> I'll see it every time. I don't know, I don't think card one does this room. I don't think you can even 
I don't think we can access this room quite yet. Nah. Let's see. I think there is one area we can get to in floor two. Let's go down to floor two and check that out. But other than that, I think the basement has a lot of, like, ammo we can go look for. But not every room in there is open. Alright, let's see. We're gonna try and pass this way. What's that noise? Alright, great. I love you. Go away. I'm definitely no big boss. Ah, that's where you get the suppressor. I was just like, fuck that. I'm not dealing with that shit. They're just like, where the hell did Snake go? Also, now that we have the suppressor, we don't need to worry about, I guess, ourselves getting fucked up. <laughs> Alright. So, now we're just gonna go down to floor one. There's no point in going to the basement when it's mostly just ammo. This area is already going to be kind of hard, and we only have three bullets left, so we need to be wary of that. But now we actually have a way of taking out enemies that are pretty easy. Uh, I accidentally got caught. I'm going to try and not get caught. <laughs> okay, he's not here. Okay, that's weird, but anyway, thank you for saying that I'm not here. Oh, shit! I'm out of bullets. Time to run. We don't have any rations left, do we? That is pretty bad, because rations are kind of the thing that keep you alive in these games. Anyway. Do we have... We have nothing. Anyway, we're going to pass by this way, and I don't... Does he... Nope. He just decided to stand there. Please turn away. A lot of this game is waiting, but most Metal Gear games is just waiting for characters to move out of the way. Anyway, there's the guy with the green beret. It kind of looks like a black helmet in this light. But that's the guy we need to go after. He is very, very, uh... I don't know. I guess he's indecisive. He's wondering, like, oh, should I go somewhere? Anyway, here's the beginning of the famous Metal Gear Solid fucking following missions, you have to follow this guy to the next area. And he's kind of a prick about it. He just is the weirdest guy ever. He takes the weirdest... You see, that's what happens if you fuck up, and you don't follow him through the stage. You get sent into, like, this area that has, like, nothing in it. So then you pretty much get fucked by the game when that happens. How is he doing? Okay, he's... I'll just try and follow a bit slower. I just thought I was about to get caught was the problem. I don't think he sees... Like, he doesn't turn his head until, like, when he goes around the bend. Like, for some reason, he doesn't see Snake there. We're fine here. And then he goes around the bend. And then he'll start looking. But yeah, the famous fucking Metal Gear Solid just, like, escort missions. Just follow a person through a weird random area for quite some time. Also, since I'm playing on the PS3 version, and, uh, well, it being the PS3 version, Snake is a lot slower in this game. Apparently in the PAL PS2 version, Snake runs at, like, a breakneck paste. Paste? Yeah, he turns his head into paste and he dies. Breakneck pace, not breakneck paste. I don't know how that would work. It's just like when you rub the paste on your body, it just instantly breaks your neck. It's suicidal, I guess. It's the suicide paste. <laughs> I shouldn't joke about that, but I think it's funny. All right. A lot of this is just going to be waiting. You don't even really have to follow him. You just need to go where he's gonna go. And he takes the most backwards-ass fucking way around. <laughs> it's like, now he's going back down to where he was beforehand, at the beginning. He just takes, like, the weirdest way in the universe, and somehow that, like, fucks us up. Like, if we don't... Even if we were to go that direction uh, before him, if we knew the entire direction, for some reason, Snake just doesn't know anyway. 
Also, this, uh, the snake you see in the profile calls is not what Snake looked like in the original MSX version. He still kind of looked like what he looked like in Metal Gear 1. He didn't have his, like, well, Snake look yet. This, like, the, the portraits were updated for uh, Snake Eater. Just so that they look a little bit more in line with the series, instead of it being such a drastic change over the while. He looks this time. I don't know if this is the last stretch of the journey, but he likes to run. <gasps> Ooh, you were you were tricking me, motherfucker. I had it where like he, he would run, and then he would run away, and then I'd get lost. So, all right, we're doing good. Now we just need to make sure we follow him. Oh, he wants to go this way again. I don't know what he's up to, but he is really fucking sneaky about it. I guess after messing around for a while, he'll finally just decide, Alright, time to go home. Alright, I'm following you. This takes quite a long time. He is extremely paranoid. Okay. And then he just decides it's time for you to die. And I don't think there's anybody else here, so I went under there for no fucking reason. Anyway. Huh? Well, now I'm confused. Let's call up our friends, because maybe one of them can help me out. This is Solid Snake. Come in. It's a tap code. They were used to communicate in North Vietnamese POW camps. Before that, they were used during the Korean War. Instructions on deciphering code should be written in the software manual over and out. Yeah, this is like old-ass copyware protection. So, if you don't have the manual... Or, if you're playing the PS3 version, you probably do not know how to decipher the things. But good thing we have the internet. <laughs> so I'm just going to search up the tap codes. There's another uh, anti-piracy thing later, but I don't quite know where that is. Let's see. Well, it is that. Okay. It says in the subsistence manual it would tell you, but, uh, I don't know. Apparently you were supposed to be able to just decipher it. Anyway, it's supposed to be this. This is Solid Snake. Come in. Oh, that's, that's not Dr. Marv. Ah, uh, I see you figured out my code. Where's Dr. Marv? It's been a while, eh, Solid Snake? Dr. Drago Petrovich Modnar. How did you... Marv and I knew each other during... From Parg... From Prager U. <laughs> we knew each other from Prager U. We didn't speak each other's languages, but we were scientific comrades. After our fashion. I was captured along with Marv when I were in America. Where's Dr. Marv? He was moved here to the tower building a few days ago. It's a tall building a few kilometers north of here. Damn it, I'm late again. So Marv's in the tower building? Snake, can you guess why they left me alive? They must need you for something. And that means... Yes, Metal Gear Snake. It is here, in Zanzibar land. They've already completed a new Metal Gear. The one you destroyed three years ago was a prototype. My favorite game series, Prototype. Even though we are in 1990, but it is still my favorite video game. The new and improved Metal Gear is many, many times more powerful. They've also working on a light version for mass production. Then it was Metal Gear that attacked the nuke disposal sites. Precisely, Metal Gear is a nuclear-equipped walking tank. Its true power is unleashed only when it is armed with a nuclear weapon. 
Zanzibar land is the only nukes in the world, and now they have their sights set on Oilix, a miracle energy source. Snake, now that you know all this, perhaps you can guess who is behind it? Big Boss! The very same. With Metal Gear and Oilix, he plans to rule the world. We cannot let the secrets of Oilix fall into his hands. Science is not meant to be used only for killing. Marv's will is strong, but his heart is weak. We must hurry. I do not know how long he can withstand the torture. If they use drugs on him, he won't last very long. Dr. Marv and I are both carrying microtransmitters in our bodies. They were given to us by a female agent from STB. They had STDs in them. You can get in touch with her if you knew her frequency. Madnar, what are you gonna do? The wall separating us is made out of Croham armor plate. <laughs> Choham. <laughs> you can't blast your way through it. Just leave here and go rescue Marv. Snake. Alright, I'll come for you later. Snake. My daughter Ellen is a fan of yours. She's not married yet, and I'm afraid I... Oh, I have a zoologist friend, Johan Jacobson, who lives around here. You can reach him on 14040. <laughs> Is Jacob Jacobson gonna marry Ellen or something? I have no clue. He'll tell you about anything you need to know about animals. Don't worry. I'll make sure you get home in time for your daughter's wedding. I don't know what you just said, because I don't like you. Now fuck off. Anyway... So, things are getting a lot more strange. Big Boss is back, and Dr. Modnar is back. And we need to go find Dr. Marv, so... Next time, we're gonna try and look into that person who we need to go check on. And we're gonna try and get to Marv, I guess. So, I'll see you guys next time.